In the final term of the 2019 school year, a scandal erupted when this footage of students singing an offensive chant on public transport went viral. I wish that all the ladies were holes in the road. And if I was a dump truck, I'd fill them with my load. Ah, uh, you can't forget words like that. They're like burnt into my brain forever. The incident plunged one of Australia's most prestigious schools into a PR disaster and provoked a fierce discussion about private boys' school culture. I had been putting up with this for my whole high school experience and my sister had done the same and I was so angry. I was so infuriated that they thought that they could get away with this and no one would care. I feel that we should have been given probably the education to know that that's not okay and to call it out when it happened. And um, you didn't get that education? I don't think so. Until now, St Kevin's College has kept far more serious incidents under wraps. I wouldn't want to go to sleep at night because I wouldn't want to get up in the morning to go to school. He was crushed by the institution. He was crushed. This conversation is really hard to have and this story will hurt people, but we have to go through that pain in order for there to be change. Tonight on Four Corners, what's going on inside the elite boys' school, St Kevin's College? We investigate how a desire to protect reputation at all costs is causing a toxic culture. It's the start of a new school year, and an entire school is gathering at St Patrick's Cathedral for its traditional annual mass. St Kevin's was established by the Christian Brothers as a young gentleman's college for Catholic boys. I think as soon as you put the blazer on, you feel like you belong somewhere and you're part of something, and I think that's what makes it so appealing. It's a wealthy school in Turak, Melbourne's most expensive suburb, and its fees are $20,000 a year. St Kevin's promotes a belief that you're very privileged and lucky to have your son to go there. The college has an enviable academic record, with Year 12 students often topping the state. Your son's basically guaranteed a good result. You, great teachers, especially in Year 12. The English teachers are best in the state. Um, great sporting reputation, um, accessible. It's in Turak. Everybody wants to go there. Because it is a private institution um, and because it has to keep these promises that it offers to parents about good grades and good performance and strong students. Um, reputation is everything at a place like this. It's a school that has a lot of um, demand and, and that parents are putting their kids in waiting lists um, as soon as they're born and things like that. What does that do in terms of people's ability to dissent, whether it be parents or boys? Um, yeah, there is, I think, the, the idea that if you take the wrong step, that it could be over. St Kevin's belongs to a group of schools known as APS, or Associated Public Schools. They include some of Australia's most elite private schools. Schools with rowing sheds and Latin mottos and time-honoured schoolboy chants.
It's full on. I mean, there's so many boys together and they, you know, there's a lot of chanting, a lot of screaming. Oh, High adrenaline, lots of fist punching. Um, St Kevin's always do well. The annual APS Athletics Carnival is compulsory for all St Kevin students or Skebby's boys, as they call themselves. There's about 2,000 boys in the stand, which is far greater than any other school. So yeah, it's definitely a, a show of our dominance and the fact that we have the pride to, um, to come en masse like that is definitely part of our culture. And at the same time, that um, turns out into a bit of a sort of a hive mind or a... Um, yeah, a bit of a frenzied state where people think it's okay to shout in public and yell at other schools. Exactly what makes St Kevin's so celebrated um, is exactly its Achilles heel as well. It has a fantastic culture of collegiality, of community, um, and that is also what's where, where this idea of pride and shame uh, is located too. So the, like, Absolutely, when you're amongst this crowd, it is like an incredible feeling of bravado and strength. That is also like the feeling of being in an army and going to war. And parents say that. And when you watch boys run onto a field or when you watch boys sing uh, these kinds of things, they do sound like they're going to war. <laughs> Wherever they go, the St Kevin's boys in their boldly striped blazers can't be missed. Just like seeing these blue, yellow and green striped blazers, you can see them from so far away and they're, I get a feeling of like, I just, I'm on, I'm on edge immediately. I caught the train with them for many years and I would, I've been yelled at stared at, I've been, I can hear conversation about, you know, other girls or myself or taking photos under dresses and just disgusting stuff that I, yeah, I would not stand for. And I would have spoken up about it if there weren't so many of the boys there, of the St. Kevin's boys there, all in support of, of, you know, what was going on, the behavior that was going on. I don't think that these people are bad people but I think when they're in a big group all together, it's hard, you know, you're in this bubble and you're in this vacuum and you don't really hear anything else except for the voices that are shouting the loudest. This sort of behaviour was displayed in a lurid rap song about St Kevin's sister school, Sacre Coeur, which was posted online in 2018. Only 17, been fucking your bitch since 13. W-A-V-Y on these streets, getting up heaps. Wavy, that's me, hopping up on tramps, fucking everywhere. Eartha Hewitt, who was then at Melbourne Girls College, ended her friendship with one of the rappers. I think that these people are really kind and loving and sweet when they're by themselves, but then they're surrounded by their mates and you're all doing, I guess, you know, silly stuff and all your friends are like, oh, boys will be boys, this is what we do. And it's like, no, this behaviour is wrong. It's not boys will be boys. It's not anything like that. They're like, it's not OK. The boys were quietly punished. You know, and what happened? What, he got a suspension? That's like every kid's dream anyway. So, <laughs> you know, you don't have to go to school for a couple of weeks. And then it's all fine. And all your mates are like, yeah, like, cool song, man. You know, 
good on you. And it's like they're cheering you on. You're like, oh, yeah, this is funny. It's just cheap laughs, really. That's what it is. And it's, it's not funny. Because it's sort of fascinating. Luca right? Kiernan was in year 12 at St Kevin's at the time. There was no real um, response from the school beyond, like, the disciplinary stuff to actually challenge, like, the incredibly sexist environment that it arose, uh, that, it, that it caused this sort of thing. You told me about an... Finley Tobin is also an old boy. The start. So in 2015, when I was in Year 10, um, there was an incident where a boy took a photo up the skirt of a female teacher. Um, and I believe that photo was spread around to quite a number of boys in my year level and probably other year levels as well. And that boy was eventually expelled. Um, although there was no real acknowledgement of the incident by the school, there was no one telling us that that was unacceptable, um, not even just to acknowledge that it happened. And I feel like that would have probably um, been an opportunity for the school to educate us about those sort of issues about respecting women. On that now infamous Saturday last spring, the St Kevin's boys were making their way to the APS Athletics Carnival when they began to chant. The St Kevin's College students didn't pause to think that another passenger might film them. I guess they didn't think that anyone would care or that anyone would call them out for it. You know, it's been going on for years. A woman passenger sent the chant video to the ABC. Melanie joins us on the phone. She was on that tram on Saturday morning. Thanks for having a word to us, Melanie. That's OK, Beth. How did it feel hearing that? Uh, I felt quite violated, actually. I, I thought it was disgusting. Yeah, the chants are definitely evidence of a toxic culture. And even though it might only be a few boys who are leading those chants, um, there are a lot of boys who would just sort of turn, turn a blind eye and almost let those happen. Um, I feel that we should have been given the probably the education to know that that's not OK and, and to, to call it out when it happened. So you sang this chant? Yeah, I've sung it. What, why? I don't know, I was, I was 15 years old, I was amongst a group of boys and it was easier not to think about what I was doing than it was to actually take responsibility. Every guy knows the hot shame of being surrounded by his mates and looking weak or looking stupid. That, that, is the, that is the main force that is driving this kind of behaviour, is, is the fact that everyone falls into line because that's what you're expected to do. When the tram chant went public, former St Kevin student Luca Kiernan spoke out on social media. I wrote a post on Facebook saying that actually this was not some incredibly, like outlandish, unremarkable, out of character event, actually, like, it was completely in line with the type of thing that St. Kevin's boys do and, and the, the, like, it was a real type, like, type of, kind of, like, typical of the, uh, of the sexist culture of St. Kevin's. That same night, another group of St. Kevin's boys did it again. Luca Kiernan faced retribution for calling out the behaviour of boys from a school where loyalty is everything and reputation is fiercely guarded. I had my portrait defaced with the words traitor and snitch. But yeah, that sort of thing. Like, why would you dog the boys, Luca? Um, that, sort of, that sort of stuff. Why would you dog the boys? Yeah, yeah, what about the boys? <laughs> they, like, perceive any attack on St Kevin's to be an attack on them personally and they make 
the fact that they went to St. Kevin's because they've been indoctrinated with the fact that they went to St. Kevin's and that should be a key part of their identity. Um, whenever that part of their identity is attacked, they feel they respond to it really aggressively. I think there definitely is a, the idea that if you go against the school, um, it's something to be sort of ashamed of because we are sort of brought up from year seven to year 12 on that idea of being brothers. I think there's a, a phrase that one of our uh, vice principals used, which was um, band of brothers. When you live your life in an environment where you are told how important you are and how bright your future is, um, you begin to feel untouchable and you begin to feel like you can do anything. Um, and there's an irony in that, in that it is true that these students from these kinds of schools will be the most powerful people um, in the next hundred years because of the privilege that they have. And I think there needs to be more done to teach these boys how, how they need to be aware of that privilege and how they should behave. When the chant first went public, several teachers called a union meeting to discuss sexism at the school, saying that women lacked a voice at St Kevin's. Headmaster Stephen Russell suspended the boys and wrote to parents. To say that I am upset, frustrated and angry would be fair. As a husband, a father of daughters, a brother of four sisters, a son and I hope a good friend and decent colleague to many women, I know this behaviour cannot go unchallenged. It shouldn't matter whether you have a wife or a daughter or a sister. It's like if you didn't have that person in your life, if you weren't married to a woman or if you didn't have a daughter or if you didn't have any sisters or your mum wasn't in your life, does that mean that you get to treat other people in a way that's not OK? In recent years, St Kevin's was caught up in one of the biggest scandals to hit the Catholic Church. You're a criminal, you're a monster. A jury found Cardinal George Pell guilty of sexually abusing two 13-year-old choir boys. The two boys were scholarship students at St Kevin's because they were members of the cathedral choir. One of the boys became a teenage heroin addict and later died. After Pell was found guilty, St Kevin's headmaster, Stephen Russell, published an article on the school's website by Jesuit priest, Frank Brennan. In it, Father Brennan said, I was surprised at the verdict. In fact, I was devastated. And he said he prayed that George Pell wasn't the victim of a nation in search of a scapegoat. The distribution of Frank Brennan's message to all and sundry at St Kevin's sends a very clear message that the victims, the students, the boys are trouble for the school and we support the offenders. I mean, it, it's blatant, it's black and white. Meanwhile, the dead choir boy's parents heard nothing from the school. Some St Kevin's parents were appalled. How would you characterise that response by the school? Immoral, unethical and inhumane. After criticism from parents, the headmaster put out a statement saying the Archdiocese of Melbourne was responsible for the choir. But St Kevin's College is committed to child safe practice. The care, the safety and the welfare of students are embedded in policies and practices which ensure a commitment to zero tolerance of child abuse. Paris Street was nine years old when his parents sent him to St Kevin's College. First day um, in the quadrangle at the junior school, um, everyone was out there. I was with my twin brother um, and it was probably one of the happiest days of my life, yeah. By age 14, Paris was a talented runner. His coach was a St Kevin's old boy who had trained students at the school for 40 years. His name was Peter Keogh. 
Did you suspect any strange motives in him? No, I don't think any 13, 14 year old should even have to think about that when you've been put into this school that you'd think would, you know, that would be the last thing you'd even have to worry about. So you felt protected and safe? Yeah. Yeah, especially because of, you know, I was at St Kevin's, he was a St Kevin's running coach. Um, it sort of felt like nothing could go wrong. In 2013, Peter Keogh left the school but remained with the St Kevin's Amateur Athletics Club, which trained on school grounds. Keogh convinced Paris, who was in year eight, to train with him alone. Paris's mother says she raised concerns about this with the school's welfare officer, who spoke to the headmaster. She rang me back and she said, oh, Mr Rothmore just wants you to know that Peter's a person of good character and you have nothing to worry about. How did he know that? <laughs> um, well, I don't know how he knew that. At about that time, Peter Keogh began sending her son questionable Facebook messages. Hot stuff. I bet you would have won the wet t-shirt competition. Maybe you needed another hug from me. Love you muchly. Of a St Kevin's teacher he disliked, Keogh wrote, suck on that, you wanker, and that is certainly one head I wouldn't fuck. I just thought it was odd. I didn't think it was, um, at that point, illegal, criminal, um, didn't understand the true intentions. It's insidious the way it happens. Um, you do have a little bit of a sense that there's something not quite right, but you don't actually know what it is. The messages continued. Ah, the pain of unrequited love. I think you're the best thing since sliced bread. Love you, kiss, 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 kiss. One day, as Paris was training alone with Keo, the coach's behaviour became more disturbing. And I said that I had a Japanese oral presentation that I needed to finish. Um, and he said, that's not the only oral you'll have to do. What did you think when he said that? Um, yeah, very, felt very uncomfortable. Um, yeah but I felt like I was in a position where I couldn't do anything. Keo insisted Paris come back to his place to look at some of his old St Kevin's yearbooks. I am drinking my chocolate milk, um, which is what I did after every training just for recovery. A little bit must have spilt, and he said, oh, the sight of that dripping down your face. Um, which was another comment that he made that made me feel really um, tense, scared. Keogh showed Paris pictures of four St Kevin students whom he said had killed themselves because of abuse by Christian brothers. That was the point when I started understanding what was going on. And then he pointed out another boy and he said that he wished he had put his hand on his butt or something. That he was a cutie? That he was a cutie and that he wished he'd put his hand on his bump during that picture. Keo then escorted Paris to his bedroom, telling him he was free to jump in his bed any time he liked. Probably one of the most scary times of my life. Um, like I'm holding my bag and I'm about to leave and then he said, do you know why I was looking forward to today's training session. Um, so it was a Thursday and then I said, I, I said no. And then he said, because on Tuesday, so two days before, which is when we train as well, he said that it's so on Tuesday that he had got an erection and that he pre-cummed. Um, and then he asked me if I know what pre-cum is and then I said no. And then he said, it's the premature stages of ejaculation. And then he said, you can lick it off whenever you like. Luckily, Paris's mother called, so Keo had to drive him home. 
The first person Paris told was his friend, Ned O'Brien, who was also coached by Keo. Paris came up to me at recess or lunch, showing me a few messages, um, saying that he thinks Peter might be gay. And what did you say? I said to him, I think it's a bit more than that. I don't think you should be concerned as to his sexuality, more as to if he's coming on to you in a predatory sense. And I went home and, and told my mum. My response was firstly shock. Um, I was proud that Ned could talk to me about this, um, that he cared enough about his friend to tell me. And um, I tried to calm Ned down. I told him he did the right thing by telling me. And uh, this is something that I needed to talk to Paris's mum about. What was your reaction when Paris told you what had happened? Well, viscerally, like it, almost like it added up. It was like, OK, that explains it all. OK, so I said, Paris, go and write it all down. The following day, Paris gave a statement to police. And then everything that came after that day in my life completely changed. Mm. And your feelings about St Kevin's? Yeah. Uh, Peter, as I mentioned to you earlier, it's in relation to an allegation that's been made by a client of yours, Paris Street. Mm. What could you tell me about the relationship you have with Paris? Well, I've been advised by my lawyer to make no comment, and my answers to all further questions will be no comment. In October 2014, Peter Keogh was charged with grooming for sexual conduct with a child under 16. Do you understand all of that? Sorry, I, I was... What's just, it? I was elsewhere. Okay. Say it again, please. Barrister Patrick Noonan was a committee member of the St Kevin's Amateur Athletics Club. The club was notified of the allegations and resolved to expel Peter Keogh. Clearly, it was not the way someone should be interacting with a child, and we couldn't therefore trust him to do so, to be interacting with junior club members. We had no capacity to supervise him. He did training at different venues. He would be interstate. So there was no way he could stay at the club um, if this was the way he behaved. But one club member who opposed the expulsion and supported Peter Keogh was Luke Travers. Mr Travers was a St Kevin's old boy and is still the college's Dean of Sport. He employed Keogh as a school coach and helped appoint him as a life member of the athletics club. Soon after Paris went to police, his mother had told Luke Travers what Keogh had done to her son. And it was about that time shortly after um, that he gave a written reference um, in his explaining that he was the Dean of Sport at St Kevin's and um, saying that um, Peter was giving him his um, unqualified endorsement, that he was second to none, endorsing his work with children. The reference spoke of Keogh's commitment, enthusiasm, reliability. In all of these areas, he is faultless citing Keogh's life membership of the club and induction into its Hall of Fame, it said, these honours indicate the high esteem and repute he is held in in these communities. It certainly lacked some critical information that someone wanting to potentially employ Peter to work with children would have wanted to know. In that sense, it was uh, potentially misleading to any employer. That he was being accused of a child sex offence. That is probably a relevant factor if you're employing someone to work with children, yes. With criminal charges on foot, Paris and his friend Ned assumed St Kevin's would support them as witnesses in the trial, but neither of them heard from the school. Although, obviously, that wasn't the main reason of doing any of this, I thought that at least we'd be accoladed or rewarded in some way. Um, just to get the word out and just, just to be appreciated for what we did, I thought it was pretty um, a pretty big thing to do. Um, but no, none of, none of that really happened. Ned's mother didn't hear from the St Kevin's headmaster until the day he had to appear in court. The first time I spoke to Mr Russell was the 
the first day of the hearing. So that was about seven months after Ned, Ned told me what had happened. How did that come about? Um, these, the lady at the school in the office called me in the morning saying that Ned wasn't at school. Why wasn't he at school? Um, and I said, well, why don't you go and ask Mr Russell? He knows where Ned is right now. She says headmaster Stephen Russell then called her that morning, wanting to know whether the boys would be wearing their St Kevin's blazers to court. I thought, wow, you really do want to cover this up. You really do want to keep this quiet. Robert Richter, the famous and formidable QC who represented Pell, was engaged to defend Keogh. Paris was cross-examined by Mr Richter for two days. Uh, Paris was 15 at the time. Now, to be cross-examined by Mr Richter is a gruelling experience for anyone, but for a child uh, who had been sexually abused and not being supported by his school, um, that's quite a remarkable experience and can be potentially a devastating experience. Paris was also devastated when the St Kevin's Dean of Sport, Luke Travers, gave character evidence at trial supporting Peter Keogh. When the prosecutor asked whether it was appropriate for a teacher or a coach to text message a student saying, I love you, or kiss, 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 St Kevin's Dean of Sport replied, it depends on the context. I was a student at the school and to have someone personally and professionally endorse him and support him, as I read in the emails and as I heard in Luke Travers' evidence in court supporting him, um, yeah, it's, it makes you feel um, like betrayed. President of the St Kevin's Amateur Athletics Club wrote to the school expressing disgust Mr Travers had given character evidence for Keogh instead of supporting the boys. Luke Travers then emailed the club saying, bugger off and mind your own business and threatening legal action. He was threatening us for having spoken with the headmaster, which really meant that we couldn't raise concerns with the headmaster without being subjected to threats. He was very aggressive in saying that he would uh, come after us sort of legally if we pursued the issue any further. Some club members with sons at St Kevin's insisted Luke Travers have no contact with their boys given his support for Keogh. Senior club members have asked the school to ensure that Luke has nothing to do with their sons including that he won't be teaching them, and uh, that commitment has been given. On April 30, 2015, Peter Keogh was found guilty of grooming. He was sentenced to a community corrections order and placed on the sex offenders register for eight years. The evidence before the court, including by the St Kevin's Dean of Sport, Luke Travers, remained secret. That's because at the time, Paris Street was a child and the court had to be closed to the public. What has also never been revealed until now is that at the end of the proceedings, another character reference was handed up to the magistrate for the convicted perpetrator, Peter Keogh. That reference was written by the headmaster of St Kevin's College, Stephen Russell. And how did you feel about that? Just gutted, yeah, gutted and... just, like, flicked off, like, this is how we think about you, we don't care, like, we... Uh, yeah. How did you feel about the fact that Stephen Russell wrote that reference? I, uh, that says it all. I, uh, he, sh he should not be the headmaster, that's all I... That, honestly, that's... Just not on. Why would he want to get involved in that? It's crazy. It is quite extraordinary that a headmaster and the Dean of Sport in particular um, will basically disregard the vulnerable student 
um, and support an offender. I mean, what planet are we on? And this is, you know, this is right at the hiatus of the Royal Commission. The knowledge was out there. These crimes were being exposed. The responses from the institutions, such as St Kevin's, were being exposed. They were horrific. Where's the lesson here? Nothing's been learned. Nothing has been learned. And all at the expense of someone like Paris. It is just shocking and appalling. Where are the words? Oh, that's appalled. Absolutely appalled. Mm. This could have been my son, you know. Could have been anybody's son. Then St Kevin's parent, Susan Lackner, who is a psychological therapist, wrote to the college, expressing her concern about the treatment of Paris and Ned. The school dismissed her concerns. You know, I would go to assembly and I, before this event, I would sit there and think, you know, this is an amazing school. I'm so grateful my children have got the opportunity to be going here. Um, you know, that I was giving them this opportunity and then I just would sit there afterwards and just say, you know, this feels like propaganda to me. I just don't believe anything that I'm hearing. They don't walk their talk. After that time, the school would routinely request donations from parents. Yeah. What was your response to that? I refused to give donations after that point. Finlay Tobin couldn't believe what had happened to his St Kevin's classmate. I had a sense that what I had been told by the school about what they wanted to impart on me was a bit of a lie. Um, I, I felt as though I couldn't believe a word they said about um, what they wanted to, for us to do in, in the community, how they wanted us to be good people, um, because it completely went against their own values. Headmaster Stephen Russell declined to be interviewed, but said in a statement, the actions of Peter Keogh were completely unacceptable and St Kevin's College strongly condemns them. After his conviction, he was immediately banned from entering the school or having any contact with the college or its students. When Paris returned to St Kevin's after a brief spell at another school, he was told he'd need to meet with the Dean of Sport, Luke Travers. The meeting was documented by a school psychologist. You asked Luke Travers, what did you first think? And he replied, storm in a teacup. <laughs> and then it says, did you want him found guilty or not guilty? As a friend, I didn't want him to be convicted. You remember him saying that? Mm. Now, to do that to a victim or survivor of a sexual abuse is... It's hideous. It's totally hideous. And I find this extraordinary too because one of the very, very clear salient messages from the Royal Commission was that the child's needs must be paramount over and above everyone else, and that did not happen. Paris later took legal action against the school. But when his lawyer attempted to get notes from St Kevin's recording Paris's meetings with a psychologist, she hit a brick wall. And it took months, months, for us to um, receive those medical records. Um, and we were gobsmacked because they were highly redacted, even though they were our, our own clients' records. So they had gone, taken these records out of a locked cabinet, redacted them without his consent? Yes. St Kevin's had blacked out 10 pages of the councillor's notes, including the Dean of Sports meeting with Paris when Luke Travers backed Keogh, not Paris. I felt obliged to support him. As a friend, I did not want him to be convicted. They'd also left out several pages, including one talking about the St Kevin's leadership. It read that Paris feels that they had the power to do a great deal and chose to protect the school ahead of Paris's well-being. Well, it's another example of trying to protect themselves, trying to protect the name of St Kevin's College. You felt that the leadership team chose to protect the school 
ahead of your well-being. That's what it felt like, yeah. I spiralled from there. You spiralled? Yeah. Your mental health? Yeah. How badly? Um, yeah, pretty badly. Mm. Paris Street struggled through his last years of school at St Kevin's. Mum would drive me to school in the morning, driving on the boulevard, and then you'd see the big cross on the chapel that um, sort of overlooks the Yarra. I'd see that and I'd just get triggered and would have a panic attack and not want to go to school. I wouldn't want to go to sleep at night because I wouldn't want to get up in the morning to go to school. He went from an A-grade student to having great difficulties with his work. He started to suffer terrible anxiety and panic attacks. He ended up being hospitalised, needing psychiatric care. He transitioned from a very confident, caring young man into a psychiatrically very unwell young man. He was crushed by the institution. He was crushed. Headmaster Stephen Russell sent a letter to the school community last year when a former St Kevin's Christian brother was found guilty of historical child sex offences. It spoke of a commitment to zero tolerance for child sexual abuse and said, our duty of care to students, past and present, is our top priority. I think that's incredibly hypocritical given what he did in 2015. Do you think that his actions match his words? Definitely not. I think they missed a golden opportunity to be trailblazers here and they really weren't and it's such a shame. Numerous current and former staff, students and parents from St Kevin's have told Four Corners the school has a history of failing to deal with complaints of inappropriate behaviour. The governing body overseeing the college is investigating one complaint by a teacher who alleges he was sexually harassed by a senior colleague. His actions not only shocked and disgusted me, but they made me feel powerless and worried about my job and future prospects should I make a formal complaint. The complaint was written last May, but St Kevin's never responded in writing and only contacted the teacher in December when it began interviewing staff for the investigation. I don't think it's good enough that you receive a written complaint in May and there's effectively no resolution to the issue and that the member who has made the complaint is not communicated with again about the matters they've raised. Now, that is simply not good enough. The senior teacher has also flouted the school code of conduct that bans staff from posting photographs of students online or contacting the boys via social media. So about midway through my exams um, for Year 12, he sent me a message um, at about midnight. The late night message sent by the teacher to Finlay Tobin read, I do hope that your new room is all very satisfactory and that you've enjoyed being in it for tonight. That could have been a normal comment to make if it were during the, the day or in person, but over Facebook message at about midnight seemed a bit odd. The teacher has denied any wrongdoing. Staff members at St Kevin's have also made reports about two further male teachers. In those cases, the staff were worried the teachers were potentially grooming boys. One whistleblower is now alleging school management pressured her not to take it further. These things should be taken seriously and staff need to feel that, they're, that, that the employers and senior staff leadership in their workplace is prepared to listen to them and, and act on what is being told to them. Paris Street settled a civil claim with the school about his grooming case last August. He hopes telling his story will be the first step to moving on. I don't think I'd be able to live the rest of my life without telling anyone. 
just for my own personal healing. It's something that I think a lot of people should know about because it affects everyone, it can affect anyone. Um, and it affected me. Yeah. In recent days, St Kevin's headmaster, Stephen Russell, posted a prayer on the school's website. This is the time to be slow, lie low to the wall until the bitter weather passes. I think the fundamental lesson that needs to be learned is to stick to the fundamental values of the organisation. It exists only to support and give opportunities to children. And you could never say that the handling of this situation reflected those values. And there needs to be a bit of courage to understand that you don't need to let that define you, to go back to the fundamental values and stick by them. Stand up for the kids. Stand up for the kids. This conversation is really hard to have and this story will hurt people, but we have to go through that pain in order for there to be change. And also that pain is nothing in comparison to the suffering that victims and people who have experienced this stuff have gone through.